Mr. Keith, I don't want to get this name wrong, Leaster? I, I know I chopped your name up, doctor. What is your name? I forgive you. <laughs> See, hey, I told y'all I'm going to need some forgiveness tonight, didn't I? I knew it. So, sir, what's your name? What's your name, sir? Lassiter. Lassiter. Well, at least I got Keith right. Keith Lassiter. Sir, please share your testimony with us. Lassiter. It's bad whenever the MC chops up your name. Thank God they won't let me carry knives anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm Keith Lassiter. I'm the executive director for Bridge in the Gap of Georgia. Um, what we do is a mentorship program because I got caught up in the recidivism of the glorious state of Georgia. Recidivism is repeat offenders going back to jail time and time again. Um, I am a three time convicted felon for drugs. Um, I never sold drugs. I wanted all I could get so I could kill myself. I was a user. Um, I had to give you all the background. Um, I graduated University of Georgia with a turf management. It was easier than to do a doctor, if you will. <laughs> um, in high school, I was all American baseball player. I got a four-year scholarship to the University of Georgia. Um, I joined the military under the delayed entry program, went to two years to the University of Georgia, graduated, went off to OCS, and I um, got commissioned in the United States Army as a lieutenant with a two-year degree in turf management. Throughout my military career, I kept going to college to get more education because I want to get promoted quicker. Um, There's no I went over to Operation Desert Shield. I was on General Force Call um, Strategic Command Staff. Um, I was on the major promotion list. I was on the promotion list to be major. Um, after Operation Desert Storm and all the hoopla I got over with, I started doing cocaine. Um, I tested positive for cocaine, got kicked out of the military. Um, I got hired though because one of the colonels that was in our unit, his um, brother was a um, sheriff in North Carolina. And after I got kicked out of the military and got a dishonorable discharge, I immediately went to North Carolina and become a deputy sheriff. Imagine that, a cocaine head <laughs> being a deputy sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tested positive for a drug test with the deputy sheriff and got fired because I jumped from job to job after that because my self-esteem was lower than the concrete right here um, because I couldn't even be a soldier right um, and then couldn't even protect the law, you know, obey the law correctly, you know, so that gives you feelings of being self-worth, you know, low self-worth, low self-esteem and all that. On the flight back from Raleigh, North Carolina, I saw in the um, thing behind the seat where they have magazines, um, there was a article in there about Turner Field having rainout games, a lot of rainout games. So, um, as a soldier, you know, brave heart, you know, I went out to Turner Field and told them Ted Turner sent me up there to check their drainage system on their field. Um, three weeks later, I signed a $17.3 million contract to straighten out the field. Um, I started my uh, career because now then, I can finally do something with the Atlanta Braves feather in my hat. Um, I after that, I did a lot of golf courses and stuff. I bought a lot of property in South Georgia, side farms and stuff. Um, I got high one day and created a chemical called, it's marketed today, called Termidor. 
I, um, that's for termite control and stuff. Um, I sold that contract, that patent to DuPont. Um, Dow Chemical does the chemical Termidor now. I sold that patent to Dow Chemical. I was, money was nothing to me. Um, so I had ways and means to support my cocaine addiction. Um, because it didn't matter, I finally put my dealer on my payroll, you know, just started paying him, you know, bought him a new car anytime, anytime he needed something, you know, I always said make sure it happens. Um, I got the contract down in Jacksonville to build Altel Stadium for the Jacksonville Jaguars. It was a $28 million contract. Um, I drove from Jacksonville to Brunswick, Georgia for, well, let me back up. I got arrested in Macon for leaving Atlanta. I was driving down to Macon, going to Jacksonville, got arrested for possession of cocaine. Um, my father come and bailed me out of jail because that was my first arrest. And I went on my way and got down to Jacksonville and Brunswick County called and asked me to come build a sports complex for them. So one morning about three o'clock, I was on my way to um, Brunswick, Georgia from Jacksonville, moving a piece of equipment up there to start leveling off everything. And I um, was so high that I missed the um, way station. So they come after me and they charge me. They stopped me and uh, found <laughs> kilo and a half of cocaine in my vehicle. Um, the federal government immediately seized everything that I had. I'm talking immediately. Um, they held me in jail for eight months until I went to the federal trial um, charged with trafficking. Went to the federal trial and pled not guilty and the jury found me not guilty because I had a problem. It was called addiction. Um, I walked out of the federal courthouse in Jessup, Georgia, got arrested by the Glenn County Sheriff's Department, was charged with possession for that kilo and a half of cocaine. Um, so if they couldn't give me one way, they was gonna give me another. Um, I didn't know at the time that I had a problem because I was married to the regional administrator for OSHA here in Atlanta. Um, I was untouchable. I'd go to Washington to parties and snort cocaine with congressmen and senators, you know, it was nothing. Um, yeah, I said that. <laughs> and um, anyway, um, I got charged with possession I pled guilty because my attorney said I couldn't lie because I'd already told the truth in the federal trial and if I lied and said that I wasn't, it wasn't mine, then I'd probably get more time because it'd be something other, whatever the court does and everything, lying or something, I don't know. So I pled guilty and I served 18 months under the care, custody, and control of the Georgia Department of Corrections. But um, the state's real smart because since I built golf courses, athletic fields, and sports complexes, what they did was they transferred me. Whenever a county football field would have trouble, they would transfer me to the closest prison there, and I'd work there on a work detail and get that straightened out. As soon as it was done, they'd transfer me over to somewhere else, you know, free labor. <laughs> You know, imagine that. <laughs> you know, but I didn't, I didn't say, I didn't say I'm not going to do that because my time was shorter whenever I got out and worked, you know. And um, so it was an opportunity to meet new people throughout the prison system and listen to their lives, you know. And how fun, basically, I thought it was a party. But um, the reason I asked you, what was the life-changing experience for you? Because the life-changing experience for me was whenever I got released out of Reedsville. Reedsville was my last 
assignment. And whenever I got released, um, thank God for the Department of Corrections. They need to rework the whole system, I'm here to tell you. Um, in the process of them transferring me around, they lost everything I had. You know, my clothes, my wallet, everything. You know, I get out of Reedsville. I was dressed in the 1980s parachute pants. Y'all remember them, the Michael Jackson pants? I was, I was dressed in a pair of parachute pants, a pair of flip-flops, and a white t-shirt. Um, the thing is, they didn't release me until 7.30 at night. So whenever I walked out of the gates of hell, I was already a target in society because I didn't dress like you guys. You know, parachute pants and stuff, I didn't. I had a $25 check. And in my act of addiction, I not only burn my bridge, I turn around and nuke them. You know, I go back and nuke them, you know, steal and make, you know, a millionaire stealing. Can you imagine that? You know, it don't matter. So, um, whenever I got released, there was nobody there. Absolutely nobody. And somebody dressed different than you guys released from prison with a $25 check made out to me, Keith Lassiter, from the Georgia Department of Corrections, 7.30 at night. I remember whenever I wanted, whenever I got out, the only thing I wanted was a piece of Papa John's pizza. That's all I wanted. You know, just give me a piece of pizza because you don't have that in prison. You know, and I served 18 months. Um, I called the Reedsville Baptist Church because I'm, I was raised Baptist. I called them and asked them, could you please get somebody to help me cash this $25 check? They hung the phone up. I um, walked two miles to Walmart and they wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. And at 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, where's, where are you gonna cash a check at? Liquor store. Imagine an addict like me walking into a liquor store, different, dressed different, walking into a liquor store to cash a check for $25 so I could go next door to get a piece of Papa John's pizza. Well, no ID, you gotta buy something. Wow.